Yeah, I can I I can try. Again, you know, not not my not my usual wheelhouse, but let's start with what a vaccine is. Okay. So <clears throat> vaccines were originally created by uh for smallpox. Okay. Right? And Basically, the idea is you expose a potential host, a host who you don't want to get sick, a person, to a little tiny bit of the antigen, that is to say the the pathogen, if you will. Right. And the hope is that you expose them to so little of it that their immune system, which our immune systems are amazing marvels of, of evolution, the immune system will recognize it as not self, as foreign, and create a an ability to both both kill off that thing and to create memory cells that then remember it if they see it in the future and mount a defense very quickly. That's because awesome. the first time you're exposed to something that's, so that's cool. not self, it takes a while. Like, I definitely know that's not me, but what do I do about it? How, how will I dismantle it? So the first time the immune system gets exposed, if it gets exposed to a little tiny bit, it's going to take a little while, but maybe it's not so much to get you sick. And that's, that's the logic behind the original vaccines. Okay. So then you have, you know, you have live virus vaccines where you're getting exposed to just a little tiny bit of the like actual pathogen. Those are very effective, but they're dangerous because it's a live virus. Right. Then you okay. could have an attenuated virus vaccine where you've done something to make the virus not alive anymore, but still itself. And those are less effective because the, it's not alive. And so the body may just ignore it. Gosh. And so with attenuated virus vaccines or with, if it, sometimes you will get a vaccine with just like pieces of the antigen in it, those are also not dangerous because you're not going to get sick from it, but the body also might ignore it again because you're not going to get sick from it. So this is trade-off. Like wow. you want the body to be able to recognize the thing so that it can protect against future infection, but if it's not actually at risk of infecting you now, why would the body care? Right. So there's this, there's, you know, there's this, there's this trade-off. Okay. So with the vaccines that are made with like attenuated viruses or parts of viruses, what you have to do to get the body to care, to get the immune system to wake up, is include adjuvants. Adjuvants, which again is a word that became, you know, that everyone learned in 2020, except for people who were already working on viruses and vaccines. An adjuvant is specifically a thing added to a vaccine in order to trigger the immune system to wake up and get alarmed. Some famous adjuvants have been mercury, right? Oh, shit. So the thimerosal, the thimerosal uh, in all the vaccines up until 2005. That's why that was in there. Yeah. And now we've got aluminum which is also not okay for humans to have injected into them. Okay. So, I didn't know any of this, Heather. Yeah. None of it. I'm, sho I'm actually shocked that I did not. You're like, adjuvant. Everybody knows that in my brain. I'm like, I don't know that. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I, I also had never heard that word before um, 2020. And, you know, I'm an evolutionary biologist. I just, and, and uh, I'm, I'm well, well vaccinated, or at least I was up until then. And well, well and, vaccinated as well. And I'd had, you know, and I'd had like live virus vaccines and attenuated virus vaccines, and I knew the difference between those. But the the logic of under what conditions do you need an adjuvant to wake up the immune system, and under what conditions do you not? Like, which risk are you more willing to take? So okay. there has been a a campaign to silence those of us who are saying now, like, it's the adjuvants. Like, the adjuvants are a problem. The adjuvants are a problem precisely because they are toxic and they're there precisely to wake up the immune system so that hopefully the immune system will also pick up the attenuated virus oh for whatever God, vaccine it I is. I did not so, understand this at all. But none of that is actually relevant to the mRNA. And I think shots is a better word. Transfection agents is another way of, of describing them. Okay. If a vaccine is a piece of the antigen, a piece of the pathogen, if you will, either a whole living thing or a piece of, or an attenuated one or a piece of it that your body then will, your immune system will respond to and create an ability to respond to the real virus if it gets, if it gets exposed to it later on. That's a, that's a more traditional definition of a vaccine. What the mRNA technology does is it's so DNA gets turned into R mRNA, which gets turned into protein. Okay. mRNA is, a, so therefore, a piece of genetic code that is not the actual antigen. It's not 
SARS-CoV-2. It's not the spike protein. It's just the code to make. In this case, they picked the spike protein. It's just the code to make the spike protein. It's not the spike protein itself. Oh so instead... Gosh. I'm so sorry. Not to, I should not have even responded. I just can't help. Like You're absolutely blowing my mind. I didn't understand any of this. Okay, I'm so sorry. I Okay, no. <clears throat> so mRNA is not the... Got it. It's not the virus. It's not the dead virus. It's not a piece of the virus. It's a code to make the virus. I'm with you. Okay, got it. Exactly. And so in the case of the mRNA shots that were actually delivered to market, they, it wasn't the mRNA to make the whole virus. 